Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today, Grayscale and BCHG appear to be making a comeback. So let's get it. <clears throat> All right, so before we get into the charts, I'm going to show you guys the portfolio so you know we still have our positions. Um, so we have BCHG mainly, LTCN, or LTCN, BCHG, and ETCG in that order by uh, monetary investment. And HZEN still kind of waiting for a pullback on this one. Uh, the pullback's not as deep as I'd like to see, but you know we'll be patient and wait for the right time. So LTCN uh, just today alone up nearly seven percent, so that's a massive amount. You guys can see here a thousand one hundred and fifty bucks uh, total return to it plus two hundred fifty five percent. So uh, that's just shy of thirteen k. And BCHG currently up about 5.2% or $500. Uh, well, sorry, not $500, $430. And total return, 378%, about $6,800. And ETCG finally, for once, uh, wasn't sure if this thing was ever going to take off. But uh, again, you know, this is the nature of investing. It's, it's always the times when you think that it's never going to make a comeback that it does like the time that you're about ready to give up, then it makes a comeback. And then the time when you think it's never going to go down is generally when it goes down. So a uh, constant battle within my mind to <clears throat> regulate my emotions when it comes to investing. But uh, anyways, so ETCG finally has made somewhat of a comeback. So today alone was up massively, almost 18%. So a couple hundred bucks uh, plus 10% on the overall return. With uh, about 121 bucks, and HN is still sitting pretty much mostly flat. I mean, it's up 10, percent but again, you know, there's hardly anything in this uh, particular position. So total return as of right now is up 246 percent, and uh, days gains is roughly about six percent. So doing pretty good. So LTCN. All right, so before I get into that, um, I did actually just make a post on X about this, so I want to show you guys this. Um, so Bitcoin did just have a weekly close here, as you guys can see. If I zoom in, really zoom in on this thing, you guys can see this long wick down here. So this candle is what's known as a hammer candle, okay? If you guys look up hammer candle just in your own time, you know, in terms of trading candlesticks... Uh, the hammer candle is a very bullish candle. Generally speaking, when you see one of those, there's a lot more upside to come. Like this one right here, this is a hammer candle. What did we see after this? We saw a big, massive, fat green candle <laughs> that basically was a, a green engulfing candle that went higher than this one. So we could see something very similar this week. So you have another hammer candle, and then we could see another big, massive green engulfing candle. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, but uh, just over the last couple of days, or sorry, no, today's today's Monday. Yeah, so just today alone, Bitcoin went from this 69,000 level and it shot straight up almost all the way up to 73,000. Uh, if we keep getting days like this, then it is pretty much almost a guarantee that this thing is probably going to moonshot. Uh, how high exactly, I don't know, but the target for the triangle pattern here is uh, roughly about 83,000. So if that happens, I am expecting Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash and the respective Grayscale Trust to start moonshotting. So LTCN is going up uh, pretty nicely. As you guys can see, green, 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 green. We just keep on going up. That's a good sign. So the one thing I want to point out here is we did kind of get a rejection once again, as you guys can see. Just so you know, I'm not making this stuff up. You see the top of this wick here on the green green candle that we're on right now? Lines up almost exactly with the top of the wick of this control bar over here. Okay? Uh, I mean, I literally cannot make this stuff up. It's, it's, it's textbook perfect right now. So if we can get a candle body close above this candle body right here, which sits at roughly about... 40 just above 49 dollars if we can get a candle close above that it should be clear skies pretty much all the way up to at least i would say at least 75 dollars then of course all the way up to 100 to 135 which is the next resistant major resistance zone so support is sitting way down here at uh 
2350 to 2680. Um, we could just we could say for now that the kind of temporary resistance is the top of this control bar at 49. That's possible. So uh, if you wanted to wait for a pullback, again, there's no guarantees it's going to happen. It could happen. It could not happen. Uh, we really don't know. To get up to the top of that control bar, you'd be looking at roughly about a 99% move. Now, on the flip side, if we pull back from where we are right now back to support, uh, the drop would be pretty heinous. It'd be about 45%, but I highly doubt that's going to happen at this point. It just looks too bullish for that to happen. There's also another scenario where you could just buy in now and just say, you know what, I'm just going to buy in and I'll just hold all the way to this resistance zone. I don't care if it goes down, you know, because you're balling like that apparently. So... 109% to 185% to get up to that resistance. And also the fourth option here is to wait for a pullback into the support zone. And then you wait for the move all the way up to the next res resistance zone, uh, which would be about 297 to 437% respectively. So I'm actually going to take a look with you guys at Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash in this video. So... Um, there's a few things here I want to point out on Litecoin. So, uh, number one, Litecoin is an oscillator to Bitcoin. Okay, it's a spinoff from Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin goes up, Litecoin's going to go up. That's generally how this works. When Bitcoin chops sideways and we go into the all season, Litecoin's probably really going to go up, like, like something like this right here. Uh, you know, we're going to see a massive move like this right here. As a matter of fact, you see the break of this trend line. When we got that, we had this massive move up. We also have a break of the trend line and you can see the move is starting to curl up. So we could already be in the process of heading to all time highs for Litecoin, even though it's still a little bit early in the cycle. So we got the break of the trend line. If history repeats that, you know, this curling up right here is the start of the move. So we are at the start of the move for Litecoin, which means at some point, probably in the not too distant future, LTCN is going to be pushing towards highs, I would think. Uh, another thing that I want to point out is that um, <clears throat> Litecoin is over $100. And if we take a look here, April 2024, we go back to April 2020. I want to point this out. So um, roughly about the same time, but the previous halving cycle, notice in May of 2020 that Litecoin was not nearly as high as it is right now. So it was about 40 bucks to about $50. Uh, this is worth pointing out because, again... Uh, Litecoin, generally speaking, would not be this high right now in the previous cycle. So I think what's going on here is the spot Bitcoin ETFs are kind of affecting the price, which is a very bullish thing for LTCN and Litecoin if you have Litecoin. We have a little bit, but not really nearly as much as we have LTCN. So now we'll go over to BCHG. So BCHG, um, as you guys can see on the left here, there's not really much resistance between this area we're in right now and this peak up here. Um, I suppose you could say this candle over here at this $30 level could potentially be resistance, but I kind of don't really think so. I think it's pretty much probably just going to go straight up to this box here. So, uh, the box, just so you guys know, is between 43 to $60, pretty large range. But, um, as you guys can see, these wicks up here kind of indicated the tops. And then you have this, uh, these two candle bodies here. So aside from that, um, we still have not had a confirmed breakout of this resistance zone yet. So it looks like it's struggling just a little bit, which is not surprising. You can see how many times we tested a support back here, then finally eventually broke down and did not even test it. We just went straight down. So until we get a candle close above this, um, I'm just not willing to say at this point yet that this is support. Uh, could it break out? Sure. Uh, but we thought the same thing was going to happen on CLSK and we kind of got smoked on that trade. Not a big deal. Eventually price is going to recover. Not too worried about that. So as of right now, support still sits at 1015 to about 1260. Resistance is uh, 1780 to about $20. So if you wanted to wait for a pullback on this one, which by the time the pullback happens, maybe the EMAs are closer to this zone. Uh, you'd be looking at about 58 to about 76%. Now, if you waited for the pullback and decided you wanted to sell all the way up here, 
you'd be looking at about 250 to nine or uh, sorry, 395 <clears> percent. <throat> so we'll take a look at BCHG or sorry, Bitcoin Cash. So this thing is just <laughs> I mean, guys, this thing is a monster. Look at this. This is just crazy. Big fat green candle, slight pullback. Then you get a break. Well, let's actually get rid of this. So then you get a break at the trend line here. If I was going to trade this as a breakout pattern, basically look for a break at the trend line, get in long here at the confirmation of the candle. So close of the candle confirms above the trend line, probably get in like on this wick close to the EMAs and then bang straight up. That's a very bullish looking, um, overall very bullish looking chart. Uh, it's it, it doesn't look like it's really that overextended. Um, I mean, I guess it kind of is, but it, I mean, this is really not overextended for crypto. So we'll do a similar thing with this one as uh, with Litecoin. So it's April in 2024. Okay, we're in the month of the halving and Bitcoin Cash is sitting around $700. Let's go back to 2020 in the having month and take a look and see what the price was back then so you guys can see the price didn't really do much of anything back then it was sitting between roughly about three hundred dollars to two hundred dollars so bitcoin cash is already kind of front running the rest of the altcoin market as far as i'm concerned which is very bullish for both bitcoin cash and bitcoin uh or bchg i should say so we actually did not get to these levels that we're on with Bitcoin Cash right now in the previous cycle until February 2021. So keep this in mind. This was eight months after the halving or uh, 10 months after the halving. Is, that's how long it took for Bitcoin Cash to get up to $700. So, And that was also after Bitcoin had topped out, which in my opinion, is Bitcoin at a cycle peak right now? Mm. I mean, it's possible it could have already been priced in, but to be honest, I mean, you got banks now talking about wanting to buy Bitcoin and custodian Bitcoin. And we're not talking like small banks. We're talking big banks like Goldman Sachs and, you know, those guys. So I would say probably not. I don't think Bitcoin's peak is in just yet. Um, I think Bitcoin probably is going to top out somewhere between 150 to 200,000, maybe 250,000 if I'm being honest. But so the point I'm trying to make behind all this is that if Bitcoin Cash is running up this early and Bitcoin is not yet at its cycle peak, Litecoin is also running up early as well. Uh, that would indicate to me that there is a likelihood that Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash both could be smashing their all-time highs by the, uh, by the peak of this cycle. Uh, because that means that we have, you know, if the cycle remains true and we're not technically at the peak until like next November or something like that, then, you know, the prices could have a really, really long ways to go to the upside, which is very good for BCHG and LTCN. So now let's get into the rest of the trusts. So HN, um, once again, uh, resistance here is still holding. So uh, even though we did have a confirmed breakout, it has not bounced and, or I should say retested and then bounced yet. Haven't seen that yet. So the bull flag target pattern is 1450. Uh, I would say that this is, mm, yeah, I guess, I guess this would be support right now. So $7 to Eight dollars at support. Uh, the support zone below that is roughly about three seventy-five to four thirty. Resistance above that is eleven thirty-five to twelve thirty. So, if you wanted to get in now, since it is technically a support or resistance turned support because of this breakout candle confirmation close plus the retest, uh, again, that's up to you. So, the move would be about fifty-one to sixty-five percent, and then to get to that uh, bull pennant pattern target would be about 94%. So ETCG, uh, if we get a weekly close above these wicks here, that would be very bullish. But then um, then we would also still need to get above the top of this zone. So that's at about $20. 
So since we haven't had a, cl a confirmation close above this zone yet, I would still say this is resistance. So support is going to be roughly about 13 and a quarter to 16 bucks. Resistance, uh, 17 and a half to about $20. Uh, do keep in mind the support down here is likely to hold at this point because you have a lot of confluence here. So you have all the EMAs at the support. You have the this channel here at the support, which could serve as like a support area. Uh, you also have the support zone itself, and you have this trend line here, all kind of sitting at the zone. So I'm pretty confident this is going to hold. But anyways, if we do the measured move from the zone, you manage to get in somewhere down here, assuming this thing pulls back, which it could, uh, you'd be looking at about 22 to about 40%. Keep in mind, Ethereum and ETH Classic haven't really even started running up yet. I know it seems like Ethereum is expensive at you know $3,700, but in the previous cycle, Ethereum did like a 70X. It went from like $80 to $5,000 or some crazy number. It was just insane. So uh, it would not surprise me if Ethereum went to 20 k on this cycle, if I'm being completely honest. So uh, this really, this price action here is nothing in my opinion. So GXLM, uh, still in this bullish pennant, but hasn't done much of anything. So we did have a breakout confirmation close above resistance, retesting the support. Uh, now might actually be the ideal, ideal time to get in. As you guys can see, it's coming back into this box. So the resistance zone here, $95 to uh, 73, basically 73 and a half. The pennant pattern is within that zone, so about 90 and a half. And support is 53 to about 58.60. So if you chose to get in now, uh, the potential move would be about 27 to as high as 63%. Um, I would say the pullback risk on this one, I, I think that this support is likely to hold because you have these candle tops here, the pennant pattern, and then you have the support zone and the EMAs are kind of creeping up into the zone. But I mean, the potential risk could be like maybe, I'd say, Possibly maybe 28% if it does pull back, but again, I don't see that being likely. So ETH E, um, we, yeah, this is kind of a weird one. So we had a breakout, a confirmed breakout, and then we had a pullback, assuming a retest, and then we actually had a breakdown. So uh, as of right now, I would say that... Um, because we had a confirmed breakdown below the zone, I would say that this still is actually a resistance zone. So I'm going to change this back to resistance until we get another confirmed breakout above. It's a little bit confusing, but um, so the zones are the top one is $47 to $41. The current one is $29.20 to about $24.90. And then the ideal zone would, below that would be about 17 and a half to uh, 18 bucks or so. So the pullback risk is going to be about 31% to get back to that zone. If you wanted to wait to get into that zone, that's up to you. But uh, the move would be about 41 to 62%. Now, assuming that this thing does not break down from the zone and it just shoots straight up to the next zone, uh, the move on that would be about 55 to 80% and then even as high on the cup and handle as 108%. So Zcash, uh, this thing is still holding as resistance, unfortunately, but it, it is what it is. So the uh, pennant pattern here has actually been invalidated. So uh, whenever that happens, basically just you know remove the pattern and then wait potentially for a new one to pop up. So uh, support is between 440 to 510 and resistance is 730 to about $8. So assuming you wanted to wait for a pullback, which if it was me, I would, because you know cheaper prices are better. So 55% to roughly about 71%. And then to get back to basically where you were at before, I uh, actually got to measure this again. So you'd be looking at about 110%. Uh, GSOL, this thing is really, really indecisive. So <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here. There's some kind of coiling thing going on here. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure what this thing's about to do. 
Um, it does kind of look like it is coiling up though, so it could potentially be having a pretty big move here soon. Up or down is hard to say at this point. I would not be buying right now simply because it is coiling and the risk is, uh, I mean, could it go up? Sure, but it could also go down. And um, I mean, you know, best case scenario, if it goes down, you get to buy the dip, you get in the ideal entry. Worst case scenario, it rips, goes to the moon and you missed out on the opportunity. But then there's a ton of other opportunity in the crypto space, okay? Tons and tons of opportunity, thousands of altcoins to choose from. So I would say the risk here is that if this thing does break down, it would break down back into the zone down here. It's so about 53% drop. Again, that's why I say I would not buy it right now. Um, so the high here is at 580. And um, the zone currently is at roughly about 180 to 200 bucks, somewhere in there. So if you waited for that pullback and then you got the move all the way up here, I mean, it'd be a glorious, <laughs> glorious trade. You'd get about 209%. So uh, mana, this thing is still struggling with this triangle pattern. Again, the top of this thing is about 80 bucks. Uh, me personally, I would not buy this thing until it gets down to at least $27, maybe even as low down to this zone at like 18 to 20, somewhere in there. Just assume you got it at 27 bucks and you rode to the top. You'd be looking at about 170%. So GBAT, uh, this one's actually very similar to GSOL in my opinion. It does look like we're about to have some kind of major coiling move on this thing. Whether it goes up or down is uh, yet to be seen. But do notice that it is there. When uh, price action gets tight within an area like that, that's known as coiling. Uh, generally, it leads to a very explosive move, whether up or down is, once again, remain to be seen. So uh, the risk here is that if this thing does pull back and break down, that it could go down, I'd say at least, maybe down to the bottom of that wick, at least 39%, and maybe as much as about 52%. So pretty big drop. Um, I'd be waiting to get in at the top of these candles, so about 10 bucks. Uh, if you waited for that and then just wrote it all the way back up to the top, it's about 223%. Uh, G-Link is actually also doing something very similar to GBAT and GSOL. This is a uh, kind of some pretty weird confluence, not going to lie. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so either break down or break out, I don't know. Um, what I will say is that if we get a pullback, it could be likely to pull into the zone somewhere because you can see this long wick here kind of touches the top of the zone and you have these rejection wicks here also kind of in that zone. So uh, support would be somewhere between 66 to about 83 bucks. The top is all the way up here at $220. Um, I mean, yeah, again, the risk is pretty large here, so potentially as much as 50%. But if you waited for that pullback and got in all the way at the top, you'd be looking at about 192% on that move. So Phil G, uh, this thing looks like it might be trying to break down. So you can see this the low of this candle here, and this is actually lower than that low. So unless this changes by the end of the week and it turns green, um, I would say there's a likelihood it could pull back even further. If I was going to get in, I'd be looking to get in the top of this wick right here at least. So somewhere around 122%. Uh, just to give you guys an idea of the risk of the pullback. So if we just get into the top of the wick here, it's about 36%. If it gets to the bottom of EMA, it's about 54%. And if it gets down to the zone down here, it's a it's a pretty large drop. Let's just put it like that. It's uh, It's pretty huge. So... Uh, if I was going to get in, I would get in at least, I'd start getting in at the top of this wick here. So about 120 bucks. Uh, the move on that would be roughly about 232%. Again, that is not financial advice. Uh, so this one, very similar to the other ones, does look like it's creating some kind of coiling move here. Whether that is up or down, I don't know yet. We always have to wait for confirmation. Um, if I was going to get in on this thing, I would wait for it to break down, honestly because I think the risk is just too high at these current levels. So to get to the bottom of those wicks there is about 42%. And 
as you guys can see the tops of these candles line up with the bottom of these wicks so about a 45 percent move down uh, that area is at about 26 to 28 dollars i believe yep somewhere around there so the move up would be about 206 percent so anyways, this is uh, the video for today on the Grayscale Trusts, LTCN, BCHG, HZN, and ETCG. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Peace.